Barbara Maigari is a program manager with Partners West Africa, uh, Partners West Africa, Nigeria. She is a lawyer uh, and a human rights advocate. She holds two law degrees, including one that specializes in human rights and international justice. So much of her work focuses on the area uh, around rule of law, human rights, gender advocacy, and so on. She is a graduate of the Citizen-Led Accountability <coughs> Strategies and Tools Certificate uh, from 2016, and uh, she will tell you uh, about her experience. Over to you, Barbara. Thank you, Julian. So I would, um, I would like to tell you about what my organization Partners West Africa Nigeria and Partners Global collaborated and how we collaborated with justice actors um, to profess solutions to challenges in the judiciary through evidence-based data. While during that project, we're also able to notice that there are problems here, but there are people within the system that are willing to see that the problems actually change and work. So just a little bit about the context, the Nigerian context. Um, for a period of time and for some years now, there have been allegations and assumptions of judicial corruption in Nigeria. In some survey by the, one of the national uh, surveys carried in 2002 by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, it was rated that 77% of lawyers and 43% of court users were approached to pay bribes. Again, in a recent survey also by the Transparency International 2018, it was indicated that 66% of Nigerians say the judiciary is corrupt. So trying to show a poor um, public perception of the judiciary. One other issue again that has been um, in, the, in the forefront is the neglect also by the executive and the legislator to actually fund adequately for the judiciary. So. Based on that, what then did we do? We took advantage of the anti-corruption agenda of the Nigerian government when it resumed in 2015 to start up a project. And the project was funded by the US Embassy, particularly the Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement, which uh, lasted from 2006 to 2017. We decided to take up a project to use um, to do, carry out a court observation across two states, the Federal Capital Territory, which is the capital of Nigeria, and Kano State, which is a um, commercial city in the north. And what we did to contribute in reforming the judicial sector was to deploy 30 observers in courts in the Federal Capital Territory, particularly 15 common law courts, while in Kano State we deployed 47 observers in 47 Sharia and common law courts to basically observe processes, procedures, and then to also monitor cases, anti-corruption and non-anti-corruption cases. So how did we go about this? First, we, we identified the stakeholders. Some of our stakeholders were the Nigerian Bar Association in both states, civil society organizations, the media, and then importantly, the Nigerian state that we were going to use particularly that we're deploying as observers and supervisors after which we carried out an advocacy visit um, to the judiciary in fct and also in kano state and then we informed them about the project sought their support and then we carried out a methodology workshop with experts the picture is here here shown showing the different experts we engage with across the justice sector um, looking at different issues, people from both states came in and other states also. Then we did a DEX review of the Nigerian judiciary from 1999 to 2016 to understand what is the context. Let's have an overview since the return of democracy and up to the time the project was um, started. And then at the same time, we also did the selection of court observers. We selected across the two states 
and then train the observers particularly on what to do. So basically their assignment was to go into the courts, observe the cases, procedures, uh, to understand for us what is the context um, there. And to help us out, we were aimed at assessing efficiency of the courts, also to assess accountability, accessibility for people, how are people able to access the system. Um, also, we try to do a user satisfaction survey where we try to understand the users of the courts, plaintiffs, defendants, litigants, lawyers, what do they experience? And then another thing we also try to observe was independence of the judiciary, the judges sitting in each of the courts based on the observer's uh, understanding and also uh, the court users. So we balance the observer's reports with the court users to understand uh, some of these uh, issues. And then finally, what we did was after each quarter, three, three, three times um, in a year, we did that for the period of the project, we would collate the data and then analyze it. And findings of the um, observation we will present it first to the judiciary in both states and then we will release to the public. The picture caption here just shows you one of the public release where we had in Abuja, FCT, the Federal Capital Territory engaging with uh, participants and also the members of the judiciary and other stakeholders. We present to them and we get um, um, questions and then people's views on how we can contribute to reforming the system. So what were some of our major findings? Um, one of Some of our major findings were, one of it is that we noticed that there's a bit of um, poor diligence to duty across. Now, one of the assumptions when we started the project and as it is, is that um, the judiciary is seen as responsible for all the challenges within the sector. However, for our, our report has been able to prove with the data presented that almost everybody in the sector is responsible. So from prosecutors to defense lawyers, from you know judiciary themselves, that's judges, um, even litigants themselves and lawyers belonging to the Bar Association are also um, responsible for some of the challenges. We also noticed the issue of, as highlighted as one of the problems, inadequate budgetary allocation to the judiciary, which is a challenge. So you find that facilities are not as adequate as, as expected. Um, another thing we also found out was poor, not so sufficient, but poor legal services at the common law courts across both states. However, interestingly, we noticed that access to justice was more visible for litigants that were accessing the Sharia courts. And also, we observed um, the lack of political will by the executive and the legislature to address some of this uh, problem. So at the end of it all, once we do this release of findings to both the judiciary and the public, we still develop policy briefs and then submit such policy briefs to the policy makers, suggesting our own recommendations for some of these challenges that we noted. Apart from that, at the end of the project, we still try to, uh, we noticed that there were, there were people, judges that were diligent in their work and we decided to commend some of them and give them an award. So a picture here just shows the chief judge of the FCT being presented with an award. What are our outcomes? Um, we've noticed broadly, these are the major outcomes uh, in the project, increasing accountability and transparency. So for now, we know that um, recently, the, ch the chief judge of Nigeria has released an order in indicating and directing that court should sit, judicial officers should try to sit in time. We also know to, we try to also increase transparency because observers were able to access case files. Again, we, we note that uh, it has also enhanced credibility for organizations that work on justice sector issues. So we know that now Partners West Africa Nigeria is an important stakeholder in justice sector issues. Again, we try to see that the project doesn't just end after the project itself, but it continues even when the funding stops. So we try to develop a court observation app as a sustainability approach, which is right here. Um, for people to use. So the app is currently being used by 
of different organizations, different stakeholders that work on such um, justice sector issues. We also use the app uh, current, what some of our projects for people to also observe and we analyze the data and present to, to different stakeholders. This is a picture of one of our engagement. This picture just shows you the way we collaborated with different justice sector actors. You have the international community, our partners in DC. You also have the Nigerian Association here, prisons, the Federation of Women Lawyers, uh, civil society organizations. So importantly, what do I want you to take from here? That early and strategic collaboration can bring desired results. We, we, we started collaboration from the beginning and it continued till the end and up till now we're still collaborating with those stakeholders. Again, so we believe that evidence-based data is a strong contributor to reforming the system and we also believe based on our mission that a system can change when the people are willing because some of the people while we're working were willing to see that the thing would work. A lot of them wanted to work with us um, they weren't hesitant at all. So for more information, if you want to know about my organization, Partners West Africa Nigeria, you can please look up to us on this website, www.partnersnigeria.org. And our emails are also here. Once you get to the website, you will see our email and then our social media platform communication. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara, for uh, that great example of, of, of how, uh, you know, everyday citizens can actually uh, have a meaningful contribution when they are engaged in, as you mentioned, a strategic and collaborative uh, approach 